Meet Natalie Allport, a true triple force at the intersection of professional sports, entrepreneurship, and content creation. If you haven't heard her name before, she is a former Team Canada and World Tour slope style snowboarder and is currently training competitively for freestyle snowboarding and CrossFit. Beyond her athletic prowess, Natalie is a TEDx speaker and a serial entrepreneur that's launched media-focused businesses and agencies. In today's conversation, we learn about life after competitive sports and how Natalie has built businesses leveraging her personal brand. I'm so stoked to have this conversation. I think we can touch on a lot of different things. It's hard not to begin with the sports. Yeah. And so let's let's just start there. What drew you into snowboarding? Yes, yeah, snowboarding is so funny because we were just talking about how you started snowboarding and you were like struggling with the bunny hill. I was also struggling with the bunny hill. <laughs> See, I grew up playing like every sport. I think I just had like so much energy. Very quickly I was on like hockey skates and I was on skis. And then hockey was my main sport and hockey was like my dream. And then one day I traded in my rental skis in for a snowboard and I had picked up skateboarding before and I saw the kids in my class were snowboarding. So I thought it was like the cool thing to do. And then I was no good. <laughs> Something about it was like, I want to be good at this. And then a couple years later, I decided, okay, like I have to decide snowboarding or hockey. And I still wasn't even good at that time. So I broke my dad's heart, you know, missing out on the, the hockey dream. But I switched over to snowboarding and then just didn't really look back. And so let's dig into the things that you didn't really expect. I feel like in the world of professional sport, you do hear sometimes stories of, you know, financial struggles of athletes or, you know, sometimes political drama. Can you share some of your experiences that you have gone through that you look back and you're like, oh, I wish I knew that heading into the sport professionally. I think I knew absolutely like nothing. Like I think I knew like from hockey days, I definitely experienced some of that. I think like at the coaching and like the Meyer community level, yeah. but then seeing it in like a federation level and then on such a grandiose scale was really kind of jarring for me, especially thinking like sports. We all love this. Like the athletes should be the center. Yeah. And sometimes it feels like the athletes are like working for everyone else. So, you know, you go to a competition, it's like one of the bigger competitions in the world and you're like, the conditions aren't good, it's not safe, and they're like, too bad, like, we gotta run it because people have TV schedules, they're streaming, there's all these things, and you're like, but isn't the athlete safety and the athlete performance, shouldn't that come first before everything else? And unfortunately, it's like, things just get so tied up with the politics of things, and... You have a very entrepreneurial past and an entrepreneurial family from what I've seen and heard. So tell me more about all the different businesses that you've started and run over the years while managing athletic stuff. Well, honestly, I think to be a national team athlete, but then also like a, a woman in sport, you have to manage so many different things. Unfortunately. Uh, like you're not getting paid the same as a male athlete where it's after for pure focus. Like I had teammates uh, who were Monster Energy and Red Bull and had all these really big sponsors. Um, that I didn't have at the time, but yet we were kind of like at this competing on the same level, like on the male side and, and the woman's side. Um, and like on the male side, that snowboard sponsor would be like, okay, we have 10 spots on our team for men and one, like the one token women spot. Right. Um, and so it was really hard to like get budget or funding from sponsors and stuff. So I really had to get creative. My first business, this is before I had to really start getting creative with funding my way through sports, was I was 12 years old and my brother and I were making and selling agility ladders. And so we had to learn like all the aspects of the business, like how to like make posters of them. And then we realized like if we don't market it, no one's calling or getting <laughs> it. But then also if we marketed it and we hadn't made any, then we're like saying no to all these people and they're going to the store and buying something. So like we had to learn and then we learned about cost of goods sold. So that was like kind of our first like delve into like entrepreneurship. But I think then also like I was always like trying to hustle things. I was selling bubble gum at school to get money to buy my lunches because I wanted to have some like an extra cookie at lunch or whatever. Yeah. I would try to sell stuff to my grandparents. Like I used to like find rocks under the cottage, which is it they owned at the time and like sell it back. They're like, this is our land. Like, but I repackaged it and burned it. So yeah, we were always trying to do like little different things like that. And then and then when I got into snowboarding, all of a sudden I had to really figure out okay, now I need to learn to market myself as an athlete. I need to, um, you know, learn to speak, learn to do interviews, learn to go to brands and ask them for funding because I have this dream of making the Olympics and it's going to take a lot of like funding to get there. So I like was 15 and reaching out and writing letters to companies. I really learned from a young age, like put myself out there and also take rejection. I probably have thousands of no's. I'll do whatever it can to like make this dream happen. So that was kind of our, my next thing. And that's kind of like, you know, I'm still to this day. What I have to do with like working with brands and creating content, it's kind of changed a bit in the format. Back then it was more like, can you give me money to fund my season? And now it's like, okay, I have this platform and I'm creating content and a lot of the brands are coming to me, which is, um, which is nice. But 
took a lot of that lane work, like years and years of getting all those rejections and no's to kind of get to that point. So then throughout the years too, there's been like other things. I just started a marketing agency when I left uh, snowboarding. And I was able to dive more into learning how to do marketing social media the way I was doing for myself during my career for other uh, people. Like professionalizing it exactly. in a way. Yeah. So doing it for other brands in the sports space, um, doing it for other athletes, consulting other athletes, creating yeah. programs, teaching other athletes how to do it, stuff like that, which is, that was really fulfilling in its own way. And then now it's kind of transferred back into me really focusing on on doing it for myself again as I'm like competing again. And through all these different ventures, did they happen relatively naturally? Like were you just doing things already and then you turn, then just turned it into a business or you went in with a plan and be like, I think there's an opportunity here. I'm going to make a business out of it. Uh, maybe like a bit of both, I would say. Like, I think a lot of times, yeah, it was kind of like things I was already doing and someone would be like, hey, I see you're doing all this training. Off, Can you like come and train our team? Like, right. Oh, yeah, sick. Um, and same thing with the social media. It was like, you know, like one of the brands that was one of my sponsors, they were like, hey, like, could you help us with this? And I was like, yeah, I guess so. And like kind of the natural evolution of things. And then also having that entrepreneurship background of when you see the opportunity, trying to take advantage of it. I love that because not everyone does that. People have ideas and they're like, oh, this could be cool or I can do this, but they don't actually act on it. But the fact that you were like, no, I'm actually going to do it. I'm going to make some money and again, kind of grow my experiences, my toolbox along what side with it is really, really great to see. It'd be for a long time too, like before I knew if I was like, going to continue in sport if I'm going to like keep competing again and I was like looking at like what's that next chapter yeah I thought, like do I have like a resume and I think doing things practically is always that much better it's like it's one thing to sit in school and be like I took a business class or I took a finance class yeah. but to actually run your business when you're 12 or something and actually understand practically what all those elements are it's a world of difference entirely I felt the same like even taking like courses in my, in business schools so yeah I feel like I've learned so much more of this in the real world yeah I did to like, talk with sponsors like now I've learned marketing and how like how to talk with the marketing people at brands and different things like that versus actually just like sitting there and going through like, this is a shirt. Yeah. Focus on price, product, promoting. <laughs> so learn everything is just like relationships. Yeah. Which is, you don't learn that in school. Do you do everything yourself or do you have a team helping you? Yeah. So like I dove straight into like the agency and all of a sudden like I had all these like businesses and brands and so I was trying to figure out, okay, maybe if I like I can succeed in this business space and like build something really big. And so that's one of the times where I kind of got caught up with like the hype of like, okay, I'm gonna build this agency. So I had employees and I realized I don't really enjoy managing people at that time, at least. I think maybe it's further in my life when I had more more time to manage people and right. managing all like training day to day. Yeah. It may be a little bit different, but it was a lot to deal with learning also to trust other people and like hand off your creative projects when like you have a vision and they have yeah. a totally different one. That was really hard for me. So yeah, at that time I did. And then now I kind of just do most things myself, but I'm really lucky to have like so many, I guess people that I call advisors and people who like, I call up a friend who like owns a sport agency and I would negotiate this with the next deal you're doing or this and this is that's been so something that's just like really helped me. So I think like having those connections has been really good, but trying to manage things on my own right now is a little bit hectic. So when we talk about content creation, why is that such a big part of sports? Especially now with social media at the forefront, it's a direct way that you can connect with your audience and like mm -hmm. your fans um, and, and just like build also for the next generation. I think, you know, brands and everything, they're putting social media at the forefront of their marketing budget. So that's where you kind of need to be. And especially in a sport that's not as covered, playing like every day on TV, like I'm not in a soccer, a basketball, a, a hockey, um, but even in those sports, right? Like we, when we talk about women's sports, they're not getting the coverage. Like there's only 4% of sports media going to all of its athletes. So again, even women in those sports are really needing to figure out like the content creation side to be getting brand deals that support um, them still pursuing their their goals and their dreams and also just to like grow the sport right like when you see women athletes creating content is bringing more fans and more eyes to their sports because they're able to reach this audience on social media when they're not getting that tv coverage or the media coverage that they deservingly should be getting uh -huh. um so i think that under creation is just so important for impacting the next generation growing the sport and the game and then also for me not only am i not on tv every day with traditional sports it's also i don't have a salary right like i'm not getting paid by a team or something like that and again not being part of the national team program anymore either like there's no funding yeah so it's like as an athlete that's how you fund your career is through sponsorships through brand deals and a lot of that now is all executed through content creation yeah and then skateboarding snowboarding action sports it's all a content creation type sports like since i was a kid i was filming and like we're making like little videos and movies so i think it's kind of cool that those sports go hand in hand with that but it is the stressor when it's like okay now my role is not just being an athlete training and competing my job is also to create content 
but it seems like relatively natural. Yeah, and I do really enjoy it. And like, I, I honestly, like, I love creating. I really like creating. And if I haven't created in a while, I kind of feel this like pent up energy. And so like for me, it's just a way of expressing myself. So I think I've been really lucky to like find a way where I can like use my voice where it feels authentic to me. And it fulfills that creative side of myself that I didn't even know I had. And you're also sharing really important messages. I think the, the content that you create around body image and nutrition, I think are just messages that need to be heard. People like to gloss over those or maybe talk about things that are like purely just I am so strong look at me do this cool trick or whatever but these are important topics so can you tell me more about why you feel comfortable sharing that side of you which can be you know sometimes scary well like exactly growing up I think I was you know when I first started on social media it was the same thing kind of yeah, I landed this new kid or like had a great training camp. No one saw that I was literally depressed and didn't want to snowboard every single day of the training camp. Oh, you're riding so well. Like you did well in this competition that you posted or you showed you made this edit of all these tricks that you learned over this training camp. No one saw that side. And I think that was like a big thing that led me to like the reason that I left snowboarding at a time is because of where my mental health was. And I didn't see any other actions for athletes or really athletes in general at that time talking about mental health on like the impact that has. And if I did see that, I could have probably fought and helped in a different way. At that time, I thought it was a sport that was really draining me. And like, I need to walk away from the sport to take care of my mental health. Yeah. Not realizing there's something I can do about it. And that doesn't necessarily mean I have to change like everything in my life. And um, and there's ways to navigate it. It doesn't mean I'm like weak as an athlete. You know, people are trying to like, you're nervous. Like, what are my competitors going to think of show this other side? Uh, if I'm vulnerable, what are my coaches going to put me on the team next year if they see that I'm like working with a psychologist about my mental health. Like, are they gonna think, oh, she's scared of hitting these jumps right now. Like her potential is done. Like she's not gonna make the next team or whatever that is. So that was a big thing that was really weighing in my mind, like these, the stigma. And then also feeling like really guilty. Outside, it looks like my life is so great. I'm living my dream. Like I was 13 dreaming of like traveling the world, snowboarding and now well, doing it. And for some reason I like don't wanna be here. So I was like, how do I like, I don't feel like I can talk about that or share right. that at the time. Yeah, like people think I'm like ungrateful. Exactly, exactly. So that was a really big thing for me. And so then when I transitioned over to CrossFit and then I was like, okay, same thing. I'm going to just like hype up, like I'm doing this and this and this. And people really didn't see like what was going behind the scenes stuff for those closest to me. And so like once I got to a place where I just felt I was, I guess, more confident in being vulnerable and understood like what happened and like, what, like when you're living in it, sometimes you don't even know what's happening. And then once I had the mental health knowledge and awareness, I was like, okay, this is something like, I want to talk about because if I saw like me talking about it, this could have really helped. And so, yeah, it's just been really important for me to normalize it and see like how many other people have gone through it. Yeah. And then same thing with like things I've dealt with was like body image. Like I used to I was in first starting CrossFit, I was like, oh my God, I need to eat this certain way because I see everyone on Instagram is doing that. I need to train or look the certain way because I see all the other athletes are doing that. And then, you know, I learned the hard way where I like had no energy, was burnt out, was getting sick, was like not performing well. I was like, wow, something needs to, to change here. And then I learned, I was like, wow, like why was I following? I'm thinking I need to look like this and do this. So I've seen like the, the harmful effects of social media. And I've seen like when people put out this like unrealistic standard, I never want to do that. And as like my platform has grown, I'm like, that's really important to me that even when life is so good and I'm super happy, I still want to like sh shed a light on like the things I've been through and all these other things to like put in perspective that it's like not always like this. And there's the highs and the lows and, um, and just make sure like if anyone's coming to my page, I don't want them to like be comparing. Like I hate that. Yeah. I used to go to people's pages and be like, oh my God, like I wish I was doing this or doing that. I just want like people to be able to take away any lesson that they need or just if they can take some inspiration or if they can just get some relatability that like there's more to me than the one being like oh my god like i want to look like this or do this i don't feel like it like contributes to the world anyone who's following your content know that we feel a connection to your authentic self if has there ever been any negativity or any downside for you putting your personal life out there for sure. I think one is like the stress of always feeling like I need to be creating. And mm. there's definitely that stress of, okay, this is kind of my job. So even though let's say, okay, I have these brand deals that are the ones like that pay me quote unquote, not also like still creating content and posting, then I don't really have the engagement or the audience or things like that. So like, there's some weeks where I'm just like kind of burnt out of it and not feeling creative. And I'm, oh, I need to still go through my footage and think of, you know, something to make. So I feel like navigating that balance in a way that feels good to me, like one, one kind of negative, I guess, or just like something that I'm working through and learning. Um, and then as a woman athlete on social media, you get so much hate. I like to post a lot about women's sports and I'm a fan of like watching a lot of other women's sports. And so like I post about that when I go to the games or try to post about the inequalities that exist in women's sports and like advocate for other women athletes and things like that. And 
those get the most pushback. Yeah. I think also being a more muscular woman, I used to get so many comments. Someone who's dealt with body image stuff, it's not helpful to like yeah. be getting comments every day about your body. And I was really learning to release that and like let that go. But it would really weigh on me. Or it was like every day people were like, women shouldn't look like that. Like why are your arms so big? And then now I'm really, really proud of how strong I am. Um, the muscle that I have and like trying to get stronger. And then that's like a big message that I put out there as well. What bothers me most now, I would say, is like when I get those comments and those negativity about being woman athlete, being more muscular, um, about women's sports. What really bothers me is the young girls reading those comments. You mentioned some crazy stats saying 4% of like media or press around athletes are represented by females. Yeah, it's like on sports media. So like when you look at all like the engrossing, like the major sports media platforms and sports platforms on sports media, it's like four, well in general actually, it's like 4% in sports media goes to women's sports and women's athletes, which is insane just the population how many women there are in the population then how many women participate in sports even at a recreational level it's obviously much more than four percent they just haven't been allowed the opportunity to grow and you need that news coverage or the media you need the press we need all that to like contribute to the growth of women's sports and it's just handicapping it so i think it's just very interesting stat and like obviously there's other stats about the amount of investment i think it's almost like it's 1% or less, I think, of sports marketing dollars a gutch and goes to women athletes, so like sponsorship dollars. We need all of that to be changing, but these stats are like, they should be daring to people because it's just, it's just really sad. I'm shocked by that. Have, in your career so far, have you seen that change? Like has the needle moved at all or is it still pretty stagnant? Over the last few years, and especially this year, like we're seeing like exponential growth. I think we're seeing tons of investment coming in. I think from the business perspective, there's a lot of investors who are now like, oh my gosh, why have we not been jumping on this sooner? Like yeah. starting to prove itself. I do think like social media has a really big impact in that because now women athletes are able to like go and market themselves on social media, like post their stuff and receive huge follower counts. March Madness, for example, like the women's basketball was a huge pull and draw. You see like athletes like Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese, so many fans, they're they're growing their engagement, they're like doubling their follower count. They're they're getting more followers and more engagement and more fans and like all those things than male athletes. Yeah. So all of a sudden these brands and all these people are seeing that, recognizing we need to jump in, we need to like invest, we want to sponsor these athletes, we want to like work in this space, how can we discover the next athletes? How can like we like support the leagues that they're gonna move into? Um and so I think we're seeing that like across all sports. And so obviously, yeah, that social media has had a had a good impact on that, but it's just, yeah, it's a wild, wild stat. Well, you're contributing to the conversation and hopefully in a few years, we'll see that parody start to come. It's not just social media, translating that to the dollars and the teams, actual investments and the new generation and the new talent pool coming up as well. I'm really excited to see how that generation grows up. There's so much about all these different sports and the inner workings behind these industries that I know nothing about. I do wanna end with a few speed round questions. First one, what is the worst advice you got as an athlete in the early days of your snowboarding career? I wish someone told me just to be patient yep. and to work more on the building blocks because I think I just spent so much time being like, I'm here and I need to be here tomorrow. Yeah. And I just set myself up for disappointment every single day. I have that like end crazy vision, yep. but like focus on the process. On habits, what is the most important habit or routine that you've introduced in your life that has contributed to your success? Definitely like my gratitude practice, especially over the last year. There's been times where like I've journaled it or like written it down or at various times. And I think also like with meditation too, I've used to have like very set structures around those. And now when I go down to the river, I'm yeah. like, oh, I just feel like, like sitting in meditation for five, 10 minutes every morning and every night, I will just like sit and I will like thank the universe and just be like, I'm grateful for all the highs and the lows, like this happening for me, not to me. If you could have a conversation with your 15 year old self, what is something you would share with her? Yeah, trust the process. My 15 year old self thought I was like gonna win the next Olympics and do all these crazy things. And like, for sure, I was like all that path and it changed. And then she would see me now snowboarding again and loving it. And then yeah. like, I think probably my 15 year old self would be like, oh my God, but like you quit. And then this happened and then you did this. And like, like, what the heck? That's really important to all the other 15 year olds out there hearing this. What are you working on right now that you want the world to know? Yeah, getting back in snowboarding. I really fell back in love with it over this past year or two. Um, and I'm really like grateful for that. And I just feel, I just, I've been trusting like what feels good, like how snowboarding feels right now. So I'm just training in my off season right now for both snowboarding and CrossFit because I still love doing both, but like definitely next season, gonna see me more on my snowboard and just like having a good time, but also getting back onto the competition side of things. We're all gonna be cheering you on. 
Well, Natalie, thank you so much. This has been an incredible conversation. I learned a lot. Yeah, thank you so much. This has been so great and so fun. Well, I feel like I learn something new about myself every time. This is my daily breakfast. We got eggs. We got a chocolate chip bagel, which is very exciting for today. Pretty simple, pretty fast to make before training. Maybe it sounds kind of woo woo, but I'm just like, feel like putting out like good intentions and good energy is important. Uh -huh. Yeah. Ready? Set. Shoveling these stairs is a nightmare in the winter. <laughs> nightmare. I like to like edit when I'm like recovering. So I'll be like just chilling or stretching or like laying here watching surfing. I think for me, I neglected a lot of stretching when I was younger, just thinking like, don't need to do that recovery work. But I really noticed, especially with my mobility, it's like a big thing that really holds me back. Goodbye. Everyone should find someone who looks at them how I look at bagels. <laughs> I love bagels.